It's Professor Adam. Let's talk about atoms, ions, and isotopes. In a nucleus, we know that we have positively charged protons, neutrons with no charge, surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons at some distance from the nucleus. All atoms consist of a combination of these three particles. The particle that determines an atom's identity is the number of protons. One proton means hydrogen, two means helium, three means lithium, and so on. We have a special name for the number of protons. We call it the atomic number. The atomic number lists the number of protons, but another important number is the mass number, which is the number of protons plus neutrons. The atomic number of lithium is 3. Thus, we know that there will always be 3 protons in the nucleus. To get the mass number, we add the number of protons to the number of neutrons. This is because they have approximately the same mass of one atomic mass unit. Here, the mass number of lithium is 7. If an atom has 3 protons, this means it must be lithium. And if it has 3 protons and 4 neutrons, giving it a mass number of 7, we will call this lithium 7, where 7 is the mass number. Lithium will always have 3 protons. When we write an element down, we usually use its one or two letter abbreviation with the first or only letter in the case of carbon here, capitalized. We then write the atomic number at the bottom left, which gives the elemental identity of the atom, which is also given in the symbol. In the top left corner, we usually write the mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons in the atom. This is important as it can vary even amongst atoms of the same element. These are called isotopes of an element. Remember, to get the number of neutrons, we can subtract the atomic number, the number of protons, from the mass number. When an atom has an equal number of positive protons and negative electrons, we say that it is neutral or has no overall charge. If we want to display an ion, we add the charge in the top right, a negative sign means we have excess electrons. A plus sign means a positive ion and is called a cation as we have more protons than electrons. We can have charges higher than one, in which case we add a number before the sign. In this case, we have a plus two charge as there are two more protons than electrons. In summary, if two atoms differ by number of protons, then they are different elements. If they have different numbers of neutrons with the same number of protons, then they are different isotopes of the same element. And if the number of electrons is different, we have different ions. The periodic table of elements is listed in order of increasing numbers of protons, from 1 to more than 100. While the atomic number of an element is always an integer or whole number, often the mass number is not a whole number. You might then ask, how can an atom contain a fraction of a neutron? Well, the answer is that the mass number represents the average composition of a sample of the element and not individual atoms. This sample contains different isotopes of the same element. In the case of carbon, there exist two primary stable isotopes, carbon-12 and carbon-13. Taking the abundances of both into account, we can obtain the mass number of carbon. Let's take a closer look at how we obtain the mass number for carbon. As we mentioned, we have two primary carbon isotopes, carbon-12 and carbon-13. Both have six protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Six in the case of carbon-12, and seven neutrons in carbon-13. This gives the mass numbers for these two isotopes. We can then use the normal abundances of these two isotopes, the percentage of them available in nature, to calculate the atomic mass of carbon as 12.011 atomic mass units.
Let's check comprehension. 